Okay, so now that we have Tailwind CSS set up correctly on our project, let's try and build something meaningful with it. We're going to take a look at this simple splash page design for a make-believe website called Workcation. All right, we're gonna start by setting up a background color to our entire page. To do so, I'll add a class directly on the body tag. And with Tailwind CSS, you can add a background color by using a class that starts with BG for background dash. When I start typing this, you can see we have some auto suggestions coming. So we have BG black or white, or a series of gray starting from 50 being the lightest, all the way to BG gray 900, which is almost black. If I keep going down, you can see that the same shades from 50 to 900 are available for different colors like red, yellow, green, blue, etc. In our case, if we look at the design, we kind of want some really, really light gray, almost white background. So let's try maybe BG gray 200. And even that is probably too dark. So let's go with BG gray 100. And I think that's what we want. Okay, next, let's add this logo up here on our page. Just a side note here, I have added in my project an image folder here, which contains the logo and the other image we're gonna be working with in this lesson. So inside our body tag here, we're gonna add an image tag. The source will be slash image slash logo.svg. And let's add an alt text of workcation. And here's our logo. As you can see, for now, it's stretching all the way to the edges of the viewport, which we probably don't want. So we should add some padding to this. Now we we'll want our padding on more elements than just the image. So instead of applying it directly on the image, I'll wrap this image in a div tag, which is going to be our container. On that div, I can add a class. And here I can reach for a padding class with P dash. Once again, I get a series of options available. So P dash zero is padding zero. P-1 is 0.25 rems, P-2 is 0.5 rems, etc. P-4 is 1, all the way to 12. And from 12, it keeps going, but the increments get bigger between the options as we don't want too many values to choose from. So if I keep going, the increments eventually get even bigger and the largest value is P-96, which is 24 rems. So we've seen with color shades a minute ago, and now with these padding options, you can see that Tailwind comes with this pretty fine set of values to pick from. That's a pretty good early insight into one of Tailwind's core principles, which is a constraint-based design approach. So for our logo here, if I try P-4, that's probably a little bit too small of a padding, but if I try P-40, it's gonna be way too much. I think here we need something like P-8, and yeah, that looks pretty good. So with the P-8 class, we've applied padding all around our image, top, right, bottom, and left. If I wanted padding just on the left, I could use PL-8 for padding left. PT-8 would give me padding top only. And you can also do things like apply padding horizontal, so left and right on the X axis with PX-8. And here we're gonna go with PX-8 and then PY-12. Yep, that's pretty good. So our logo is a little bit too big here because it's using the whole width of the viewport. We should control this logo size by maybe setting a fixed height on the image. So down there on the image, I'll add a class and I can add a height class with, you may have guessed, H dash. Once again, we get that list of options, which should now start looking familiar. So here, if I go with H2, it's going to be way too small. H20 is going to be too big again. So let's try something in between H10. And yeah, I think that's what we need here. Nice, so let's implement the next element, which is this image here. Below my logo, I'll create another image tag. This time the source will be image slash beachwork.jpg and the alt tag will be woman work cationing on the beach. So immediately you can see that we need some spacing between the two elements. We can probably add a margin top to the image to achieve that. So on my image here, I'll add a class and to apply a margin top, I'll go MT dash. And you know what's coming, a list of options. Here, I'll go with MT6, and yeah, that works well. Now on our design, you can see the image is nice rounded corners here, and also a subtle shadow. So we're gonna implement these two things next. So for the rounded corners, I'll use a class called rounded. And here we have options ranging from small all the way to three XL or even full. So if I try three XL, it's probably going to be way too much for what we need. So I think here we want something like rounded dash um, LG. Yeah, that looks nice. For the shadow, I'll use shadow. Same deal, shadow small, medium, large, XL or two XL. And here I think two XL will be just too much. Yeah, and XL is probably what we want. I like that. 
Good stuff. Moving on to the next element, which is this headline here. This looks to me like the most important piece of content on the page, so we should use the H1 tag for that. So I'll go below my image and open an H1 tag that says, you can work from anywhere. Take advantage of it. So our heading comes completely unstyled and you know the drill, we're going to add a few classes to it. I'll start by adding some margin top with MT and let's go with six again so it matches our previous spacing. And now I wanna make the font size bigger and in Tailwind you can change the font size with text-utilities. For font sizes we have options ranging from text XS for extra small, which looks extra small, all the way to very, very large font size text 9XL, which is way too big for what we need. Here, I'll shoot for something like text 2XL in the middle, and yep, that's the right one here. Next, let's change the font weight of this headline, and I'll use font dash, which gives us font weight options ranging from thin, which is 100, all the way to black, which is 900. So here's black, which is too much for our use case. And let's look at thin, which is going to be way too thin. Here, I'm gonna go with font bold, which is, if I hover, you can see the 700 font weight. In our design, the second part of the headline here has a different color, so let's tackle that next. To do that, I'll wrap the second part of the heading here in a span element. And on this span element, I'll add a class of text, indigo. And once again, here's our color shades. Uh, and let's try maybe, yep, 400. Mm, that looks just a little bit too light, so I think we'll go here with 500. Yeah, now it matches the logo nicely. Now, the first part of our heading here is currently completely black, which is not the case in the design. And if you look at the logo, it's also a slightly off black, which is a very dark gray. It's fairly common for designers to use a very dark gray instead of pure black to make things a little bit easier on the eyes. So up here, let's add a color class as well. And I'll go with text gray 900, which is the darkest variant. And there's not much difference, but it's a little bit more subtle now and it matches the logo a little bit more closely. That should do it for our headline, so now we're going to tackle the paragraph down here. So I'll copy the text quickly, and below our heading tag, we're going to open the paragraph tag here, and I'll paste the text inside of it. Same deal, no styles and right against the previous element, so let's add a class. We'll start with margin top once again, but this time I want a little bit less spacing because I want the headline and the paragraph to feel connected together. And even that is too much, so I'll try empty two. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, just a quick aside here, you've probably noticed that we keep using this empty dash margin top utilities on every single element. This can get quite repetitive and I want to quickly show you a nice little trick. So let's imagine for a second that we were applying the same margin top to all elements, so I'll change my paragraph tag here to have a margin top of 6 as well. So in this case we would have empty 6 for our paragraph tag, our image and our h1 tag. So in situations like this, where you keep applying the same margin top on all elements within the parent container, you can do something like this. So I'll delete all of these and I'll go find the parent element, which is this div here, and apply a vertical spacing utility with space dash y for vertical axis dash. And here we'll choose the level six to match our margin. As you can see in our preview, we've preserved the spacing between the elements so spacing utilities apply margin top to every single of the children element except the first one. Since we want to use different spacing values here, we're actually not going to use the spacing utility, but I thought that was something worth showing you quickly. Okay, so let me remove the spacing utility quickly and add the margin top back to our image, our heading, and then here in our paragraph where we had empty dash two. Right, so our paragraph is currently too dark and it somewhat competes with the headline here, so let's make it a bit lighter. I'll try something like text gray 400, and that's probably too light, it's a little bit difficult to read, so how about we go with something like text gray 600. Yeah, I think that works nicely. Sweet, we're making really good progress here and we have one more element to implement, which is this button here. Now, since it's a simple landing page, this button is probably just a link to another page, so instead of using a button, I'm going to use an anchor tag here. So let's go below our paragraph tag. Now, because anchor tag by default have an inline display property, I'm going to wrap this link in a div which will be our block element level. Inside, I'll create the anchor tag. We don't really care about the href for this example, and the text will say, book your escape. So let's add a bit of space on the parent element with empty mm, four here. And now let's make our link look like a button. I'll start by giving it a background color of BG Indigo 
500 and let's make the text white. Now it clearly needs some padding, so I'll go PX4 horizontally and PY2 vertically. Now let's be careful here. You might notice that it's not respecting our vertical spacing. And to fix this, I can add an inline block class. All right, that's better. So let's add some rounded corners with rounded and I'll use the same value as the image, which was LG. And I think if we're gonna go with these rounded corners, we should increase actually the padding a little bit. So let's go PX5 and PY3. Yeah, that looks better. Let's also add a shadow with shadow. And here we probably want something a little bit less than on the hero image. So let's go shadow LG. Yeah, that looks about right. So it looks pretty good, but we should probably style the text a little bit. If we look at the design button, it's using uppercase characters and the font is a little bolder. So let's start by making the text uppercase with uppercase. Whenever you use uppercase text, it's also a good idea to increase the letter spacing a little bit so it's more readable. So we can do letter spacing utilities with tracking. And you can see we have options for wide, wider or widest. And I think here we can go with tracking wide. And actually let's try tracking wider. And yeah, that looks nice. Let's also make the font not completely bold, but let's go with something like semi-bold. And yeah, that looks good. But now that our text is uppercase and a little bit thicker, it looks a bit too big. So I might make it a bit smaller with text small. Yeah, I think that looks great. Cool, so let's look at our design and let's look at what we've built. <laughs> That's not bad at all. We were able to take this custom design and build it entirely with Tailwind Utility Classes. We didn't have to write a single line of custom CSS. And the really cool thing is we were able to build this whole page without ever leaving our HTML file. In the next lesson, we're going to make this design responsive, once again, without writing a single line of custom CSS.